welcome to the wonderful world of the subjunctive mood. And I use, you know, I, wonderful, I'm going to put that in little air quotes because it's, it's awful. The subjunctive mood is actually something that's used a whole lot in Spanish. And one reason that it can be very difficult for native English speakers to, to kind of get their heads around is that we don't really use it in English. Yes, English, contrary to what most people think, English does have the subjunctive mood. But in modern English speech and usage, we've completely gotten away from it. Uh, we, we, we cheat. But unfortunately for native English speakers, Spanish still uses it and uses it a lot. So I'm going to explain two things here as quickly as I can. And again, this is just the basics. There's a whole lot more to it later on, but this will this will get you through a lot of it. Uh, I'm going to go over two things. One, how to form the subjunctive, how to write it out, how to spell it, how to say it, and then when it's used. Okay, the first thing, how do we spell it? Well, let me get a pen here. Okay. In order to form the subjunctive mood, the first thing you're going to do, and I know I'm kind of out of the frame here, but I want to make sure that you can see this. You're going to take the present tense yo form of the verb, whatever verb it is that you want to put into the subjunctive, okay? So if we want like uh, besar, besar, to kiss, okay? The yo form is beso, present tense, okay? This is just the first step. This isn't the subjunctive yet. This is just the first step to get to the subjunctive, okay? So beso would be the yo form. Escribir, the yo form is escribo, okay? Vivir, yo form is vivo. Tener, the yo form is tengo. Careful on that. Um, a stem changing verb such as empezar would be empiezo. Okay, so you take that yo form, whatever it is, and you're, then you're going to drop the o. Just drop it, get rid of it. Okay, if you watch the video on formal commands, you're going to notice that there are a lot of similarities here. So let's just take the verb besar. Okay, it's a fun one. Besar meaning to kiss. The yo form is beso. I hope you can read my sloppy writing. We drop the o. Okay, we're left with bes. Now what we're going to do, and you're going to hear me use this expression a lot, is we're going to add the opposite vowels. Okay? And what that means is that for AR verbs, normally we would add o, as, a, amos, ais, and an. Here, we're going to add es. It's going to be e, es, e, amos, ais, and n. Okay? It's the opposite vowel. For ER and IR verbs, we're going to, instead of, you know, like a vivir would be vivo, vides, vive, vivimos, all that. This time, for the subjunctive, we're going to add a's. So instead of vi, uh, the yo form would be viva, the two forms, vivas, viva, vivamos, vivais, and viva. Okay? So we're switching the vowels. Okay? Uh, with a verb like tener, be careful. Okay? The yo form is tengo. You drop the o. You're left with teng. All right? And because that's an er verb, now we add the opposite vowel, tenga, tengas, tenga, tengamos, tengais, and tenga, okay? Now, there are some goofy, nasty, a few verbs in there. That's for a little bit later. But this is just the basic subjunctive. This is how we form the subjunctive, okay? So if we got that down, and hopefully we do, now we're going to talk about, well, when do we actually use this? There's a little mathematical formula here that dictates when we're going to use the subjunctive. And again, I give you... A little caveat here, a little warning. There are a few exceptions to this rule. Okay, but again, that's for way down the road. Okay, this is gonna this is gonna do just fine for about 95% of the time. Okay, so we'll just go with it. So the le uh, this purple ink. That's what they taught me to do in teacher school. Use different colors of ink so that people don't get bored. Um, the purple ink here expresses our little mathematical formula, and I'm gonna go through this with you. The letter S stands for subject. Subject is a person, place, or thing. It's a noun, basically. The letter B stands for verb. Okay? And then this little word K is just a conjunction that just ties the two halves of the sentence together. In order to use the subjunctive, we need to have what we call a compound sentence. A compound sentence is a sentence that has two subjects and two verbs. Okay? Two clauses. This is what we call the main or uh, independent clause. And over here, the second half of the sentence, the clause, is called the dependent clause, or the subordinate clause, okay? I don't care. Clause one, clause two, this, that will not be on the test, okay? So, in order to use the subjunctive, you'll notice I have S1 and S2. You have to have two different subjects, okay? So if I said something like this, I want to eat chocolate, okay? 
That would not require the subjunctive because I only have one subject in my sentence. I. I want to do this. Okay? So you have to have two different subjects, and then you're going to have two different verbs. You notice V1 and V2. Verb number one, verb number two. Okay? So you, in order to use the subjunctive, once again, you need two different clauses, two subjects, two different verbs. And then, and this is the kicker, this first verb has to be a certain type of a verb. Okay? It has to express a certain thing. Um, there are a couple of acronyms that people have come up with over the year, and I've put them over the years, and I put them both here. You can, whichever one works for you, use it. Okay? This verb has to express either what we call diwa or weirdos. Okay? The diwa stands for the D stands for doubts, emotion, wanting or will, and approval. Okay? Or if you want to do uh, weirdos, it's Want, emotion, impersonal expressions, recommendations, demands, and then the word, oh, there's no S, it's just weirdo. And then O stands for the word ojalá, ojalá, which is a, used a lot in Spain and even in other countries. It, it's, it means like, I really want, okay? And, uh, and it requires the subjunctive. Okay, so, this verb, if you have a sentence that has two different subjects and this first verb here, V1, expresses diwa or weirdo, okay? Doubt, emotion, recommendations, um, what, what people want, what people hope for, all that good stuff. If, you, if that verb expresses one of these guys, then the subjunctive will be placed in this verb down here, okay? And then you're going, wait, you've already forgotten what the subjunctive is. No, it's this guy over here, okay? So let me give you an example of this. If I say, I want my daughter to clean her room, okay? I would say, yo quiero que mi hija, okay, I'm going to stop there. So, in this sentence, what's my first subject? Yo, I, okay? Quiero is my first verb. Well, quiero, want, well, that's the W here, okay? So we're, we're going pretty well here if we want to use the subjunctive. Yo quiero que, there's the K that ties the two halves of the sentence together. Yo quiero que mi hija, oh, there's my second subject. Okay. So all of, the, all of the requirements, all of the triggers have gone off here. I have two different subjects, I and my daughter. And then this verb here expresses uh, what I want to happen. Okay. So because of this, I have to use the subjunctive down here in the second sentence, or in the second verb, okay? Now, the verb to clean a room is limpiar, limpiar, it's an AR verb, okay? I take the yo form of that, limpio, I drop the o, I'm left with limpi, it sounds kind of funny, and it's an AR verb, so I'm going to put an e, so I'm going to, for the third person singular, for my daughter, I'm going to say, yo quiero que mi hija limpie su dormitorio. And that's a sentence with the subjunctive. Okay? And, you know, all the conditions have to be met. Now, let's say, instead of I want her to do it, let's say I know that my daughter cleans her room. I know it for a fact. Yo sé que mi hija. Now, question for you, and I'm going to pause here for dramatic effect. Would that require the subjunctive? Should be answering no. It does not require the subjunctive. I would have to change this e back to an a. Okay. Why? Well, I have two different subjects, right? I have I, my daughter, but this first verb, knowing, that doesn't express doubt. This is the opposite of doubt. I know for a fact that she cleans her room. Well, sometimes. But the point is, I'm not expressing diwa and I'm not, or or weirdo, and so for that reason. I do not use the subjunctive at the end of that sentence. Okay? So, recap. How to form it? Take the present tense yo form. Okay? Drop the O. Add the opposite vowel. That's the subjunctive. That's how you form it. Your basic sentence structure to use the subjunctive. You're going to have two different subjects. You're going to have a verb that expresses either diwa or weirdo, whichever one you want to look at. I don't care. Uh, and then the subjunctive will be down here in that sentence, okay? Now, I've got a couple of sentences here. 
uh, that I'm going to give you in English, and I want you to come up with the sentences in Spanish. Use the subjunctive if it's necessary. Okay? The first one is, and <laughs> you're going to say this, you're going to, this is you talking, okay? I doubt that Senor Mason has friends. Okay, so remember, when I say I, it's not me, it's you, okay? I doubt that Mason has friends, okay? The second one, we want him to work. We want him to work. And the last one is, she wants to eat. She wants to eat, okay? I will put the answers to these in the description below the video there. So, see if you got these right. Okay? And that's the basic of the basics of the subjunctive. So, good luck.